We're going to do exercise 11.6. Take us through learning objective number three, computing and interpreting return on investment. Selected operating data on two divisions of Prism Company are given below and up here in the top corner of the screen I have replicated what is given in the text. Required, number one, compute the rate of return for each division using the ROI formula stated in terms of margin and turnover. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's derive that first. Remember, our ROI is our operating income over our average operating assets. And if we're wondering how to get it into margin and turnover, keep in mind it's operating income multiplied by average operating assets. So whatever we put on the denominator here and the numerator will cancel out, giving us our original term. So if you can remember this, operating income over average operating assets, all we do is we spread them out and put sales here and sales here. Operating income as a percentage of sales is margin. Sales divided by operating assets, average operating assets, is turnover. So we're ready to go east and we will just plug the numbers in our operating income in the east 70,000 our sales 800,000 multiplied by 800,000 divided by our average operating assets now be careful here we have average operating assets and we have this plant and equipment this is extra information just to see if you're going to be lured in to use this. This is a trick. We want average operating assets, 300,000. So our margin in this case is 0 0.0875, 8.75% margin. Our turnover is 2.67, which will give us a total ROI of 23.33%. What about the West? Let's use the numbers in the West. The West has uh, operating income of 115,000 divided by sales of much greater, 1,850,000 times our same sales, 1,850,000 and average operating assets of 400,000, which will give us a margin of 0 0.06216 times a turnover of 4.62. Five for a total return of 28.75%. So ROI is better in the West. Let's have a look at what number two is asking us to do. Number two says which divisional manager seems to be doing the better job and why? So if we want to look at who's doing the better job, let's break it down in terms of margin which divisional manager is realizing a better operating income margin? The East. So East wins on margin. But which divisional manager has a better turnover ratio? Well, the West does by 4.67. So the West wins if we're talking about turnover. But overall, for overall ROI, it's given to the West primarily because of their superior turnover. In other words, they're deficient on their margin compared with the East. They had come in at a lower margin, but because they use their assets far more efficiently, that more than makes up for the smaller margin, the smaller operating income margin. So the West is doing a great job. So there is an opportunity here. The manager from the East should speak with the manager in the West about how they achieve such a great turnover rate. And the manager in the West should speak to the manager in the East about how they achieve that operating income margin. So they can start sharing information between each other. And if the East can help the West increase their margin, and if the West can help the East increase their turnover, they all benefit. The company overall benefits. So there's a great way to share information here on how they're doing things. Or it could just be the nature of the business is such that you're not going to get much of a turnover here. This could be very, very uh, uh, fixed asset uh, intensive, whereas this could be more labor intensive. More labor intensive would lead to a smaller margin, 
but a greater asset turnover. So, you know, there might be a situation to be fixed or it just might be the characteristic of the type of business or the type of industry that we're in. How do we know? We only learn this with experience, with actually doing this in the real world out there. There's 11.6. Well, let's look at exercise 11.7, contrasting return on investment and residual income. That'll get us through learning objective three and four. Ferris Limited of Australia has two divisions, one in Perth and one in Darwin. Selected data on the two divisions follows. And I've replicated in the top corner of the screen up here where my cursor is rapidly moving around. Required, number one, compute the ROI for each division. All right, that's fairly straightforward, so let's do that. Return on investment for Perth you'll recall was at, was operating income 630k divided by average operating assets 3 million which will give us 21 percent the ROI for Darwin we just use the same formula 1.8 million in our numerator that's our operating income average operating assets of 10 million will give us 18 percent on a cursory reading, it looks like Perth is the superior company in terms of ROI. Number two, assume that the company evaluates performance using residual income and that the minimum required rate of return for any division is 16%. Compute the residual income for each division. All right, number two, we're looking at residual income, RI, and we'll do it for Perth first. That'll be 630,000 is our operating income minus what we should have made, which is our average operating assets times our minimum required rate of return of 16%. We'll give us 630k minus 480. We have 150,000 in residual income. Our residual income for Darwin calculated the same way, just different numbers, is 1.8 million minus our assets are 10 million times our minimum return of 16%. will give us 1.8 million minus 1.6 million or 200,000. So on residual income, suddenly Darwin is better. So who do we believe, ROI or residual income? Number three is going to ask us to figure that out, I bet. Number three, is the Darwin Division's greater residual income an indication that it is better managed? And in the uh, lecture uh, uh, um, video, I said that what you can do with residual income is you can express residual income uh, as a ratio to sales, a residual income margin, and you can express residual income as a function of average operating assets to get a better idea. So if we do that for Perth, we have 150,000 in residual income divided by 9 million in sales will give us 1.67%. So our residual income margin is 1.67%. Our residual income as a percentage of our operating assets is 150,000 divided by our 3 million in assets will give us 5%. So let's see how residual income measures uh, measure up for Darwin. And then we'll do the same thing here. For Darwin, uh, we'll put uh, uh, residual income as a percentage of sales. Our residual income was 1.8 million and our sales were 20 million. Oh, sorry. 200, 200,000 over 20 million will give us 1%. So our residual income margin is only 1%, whereas for Perth it's 1.67%. Let's express it as a percentage of our average operating assets. We'll have 200,000. Our average operating assets in, uh, in Darwin are 10 million and that will give us 2%. So Perth is still better. 
their residual income as a percentage of their operating assets comes in at 5% versus 2%. So on both of these measures, uh, Perth wins. Even though they don't win on residual income, they have a better ROI, they have a better residual income margin, and they have a better residual income return on average operating assets, but a lower residual income. And that really uh, can, can come down to, look at, look at the difference in sales between Perth and Darwin, 20 million versus 9 million. So the extra residual income generated by Darwin is really just a function of its size. Once we control for size and we divide by sales and we divide by average operating assets, that controls for size. It expresses residual income as a ratio of those two. We see the ratios are better in Perth.